Hi, good Hello. evening. <laughs> good evening. How are we all? It's great to see people logging in already. Um, so, hello. Hello, Shell. Hello. Hello, Russell. Um, we're, we're allowed to sit closer. Have you yeah, seen noticed yeah. this? So, um, yeah, we are. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. It's good. Um, yeah. So, how's your week been? <laughs> My week's been very good, actually. Good. It's been. It's Hi, Chairs. Hi, Chairs. Hi, Chairs. Yeah, it's been really good so far. So I've been to the hospital today about my eyes because I've been having a lot of trouble over the last year with my eyes and um, dry Beautiful eyes. Beautiful eyes you've got. Oh, thank you very much. Um, but I've I saw the consultant today and I haven't got to go back for twelve months. So yes, yes, and yes, yes. That's really good. So that's a good thing. Yeah. So. And what about Hoplon Cassidy? Oh, my mum. So my mum has um, had an operation on her feet well, on one foot on Tuesday um, to amputate. It was supposed to amputate a couple of toes, but she ended up with just one. Um, I'm doing that because they only cut... They've only cut a, a nail, off. aren't they? Yeah, well, they cut a bit off <laughs> and shaved some bone off down mm. the side of the feet. So she's, yeah, she's hopping nicely. She's got to walk on a heel for the next <laughs> two weeks, five minutes, an hour. Um, we'll wait and see if that um, happens. So, yeah, so please pray for her and for my dad as well, please. Yeah. Because, yeah. It's, yeah. Hi, Mim. <laughs> Hi, Pam. Hello. Hi, Kat. Hi, Yvonne. Once Who's more. Peter Dally? I don't know. Once where more, are you, I've Pete? got the um, contact lens thing again where I've got one in and one out, but so I can't, I can not see a lot. Where, where is Pete? I He's don't know. Enough. What's he doing? Pete's taken an evening off, so <laughs> it's been mad. It's been off. mad here. So, um, so really grateful to everyone that's been helping do all the work. Yeah. Hi, Clive. Hi, Clive. Hi to the Browns. Oh yeah, I see that as well. Karen, Karen are you still on holiday, Kaz? People. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. It's good they heard you were on. Well, of course, so, you know, people girl power and all that. <laughs> so we've got um, a great session. So we did the baptism of the Holy Spirit yes last week. Yes, we did with Dave. Dave and Sue are on holiday, so yes, you've got us Norfolk, this week. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Sorry, I thought, at it, I saw that. Oh, they're home now. Hi, Janice. Hi, Janice. Um, so yeah, so um, this week we're going to be looking at the gifts of the, the, gifts Holy, Spirit. Of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Um, so we're looking forward to your questions. Um, keep it easy for me. Yeah, please, please keep it easy. I've had a <laughs> Shell's hard the day. expert. So just if you put in the beginning of your please questions, don't. put Shell. Can you tell? Just that's how you need to start if all you your say, questions. Can you tell us? All I'll do is say no, I can't. But Russ probably can. <laughs> so. Uh, uh, you're not going to get out of it. So it looks like we've got um, everyone's online. So um, it's it's that exciting time where I can say run VT. Greetings and welcome to session nine of our discovery course. And uh, we spoke last time about the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Um, this session, we're going to talk about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And the good news for us is that when the Holy Spirit comes to baptize us, to give us that baptism of power, that he comes bringing gifts. And um, I want you to understand that these gifts are not just uh, additional extras, they're not Boltons, but they're actually essential to the life of the Christian in all sorts of ways and for all sorts of reasons. And God sends these gifts with the Holy Spirit in order to help us uh, again to become what he wants us to be and to do what he wants us to do. So um, there are gifts. The whole point of a gift is that it's free uh, and uh, there's, we don't earn these gifts, we don't deserve these gifts, we don't you know, we, uh, it's not a contractual obligation on anybody's part, but it is the role of the Holy Spirit when he comes and baptizes us with power to live in us and to bring these gifts out as and when they are appropriate in order that the purposes of God are served. Now, let me just read you a few verses of scripture to get us in the right place with this. First of all, Ephesians chapter four at verse 11. 
It was he who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers, to prepare God's people for works of service, so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of men in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will in all things grow up into him who is the head that is Christ. Let me read you now another passage from 1 Corinthians chapter 12 uh, at verse 4. It says this, there are different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but the same God works all of them in all men. Now to each one, the manifestation of the spirit is given for the common good. To one there is given through the spirit, the message of wisdom. To another, the message of knowledge by means of the same spirit. To another, faith by the same spirit. To another, gifts of healing by that one spirit. To another, miraculous powers. To another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing between spirits. To another, speaking in different kinds of tongues. And to still another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same spirit. And he gives them to each one just as he determines. So the first thing that I want you to see here from these two passages is the two passages are actually quite different. The first passage from Ephesians 4 talks about gifts of the Spirit who are people. So Ephesians 4 there is about people gifts that God has given uh, through the Holy Spirit people to the church as gifts to help the church become what it ought to be. And he names um, apostles, prophets, uh, evangelists, pastors and teachers, the, the fivefold ministers as, they, as they're commonly known. These are people and they are sent to bring the church to maturity. In other words, God has gifted these people particularly to work in the church and, 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 and to bless and develop and encourage and challenge the church to a place of maturity in both faith and experience, in what we believe and in what we practice and uh, the role of these um, five different gift people and it might be one person who's got two or three of these gifts that's entirely possible as well but the role here is to work in the church to bring uh, people to maturity in their faith maturity in their practice in order that the purposes of God and the mission of God is properly served. Now, in the second passage, we read about something which is also described as gifts from the Spirit, which are, uh, there's a whole little list there um, of things which the Holy Spirit gives to all of us as and when they are appropriate. Now, here we're, we're finding gifts that are, if you like, the toolbox of Christianity. Uh, gifts like healing, that when we come across sick people, you know, we can ask them uh, and never force it on them. We can ask them, uh, you know, would you like me to pray for you to be healed? And if they say yes, um, my normal practice is to ask, is it OK if I put my hand on your shoulder? And if the answer is yes, I'll put my hand on the shoulder and I will pray and ask the Holy Spirit to heal them because I don't have any healing power as such. But the Holy Spirit does and he works in me and through me to bring that healing. There are things like words of knowledge. That's when God will reveal things to you that you couldn't have known unless the Holy Spirit told you. There are things that you couldn't have known in, in the normal scheme of things, and yet the Holy Spirit reveals those things to us so that we can either act on them or we can share them with other people to help them and to inform them. Um, there are miracles and, and, and there is faith and there's a, there's a whole great little list there. There are things like speaking in tongues and prophecy, which uh, I think really are the, the staples of a uh, Christian spirit-filled life. Um, why would I say something like that? Well, uh, quite simply because of this, because uh, uh, when we speak in tongues, 1 Corinthians 14, Paul tells us when we speak in tongues, we edify, we uh, build up ourselves. The, the word there is the Greek word oikodomo, and it literally means to make strong. It's a word that you might use if you were in the construction industry, talking about foundations. It's a word that means make strong, to, to have something firm to build on. So 
when we speak in tongues, we strengthen ourselves. We make ourselves firm. We build foundations in our own life. But he continues in, in 1 Corinthians 14, when we prophesy, we uh, build up, we encourage others. And it's the same word, same Greek word. So when we prophesy, we make others strong. We build foundations in their lives and we help them and encourage them. So when we speak in tongues, we strengthen ourselves. When we prophesy, we strengthen others. Two very important and significant significant gifts that every Christian should be exercising because we all need strengthening and everybody around us, you know, I need strengthening and everybody around me needs strengthening. So I pray in tongues to strengthen myself and I prophesy to strengthen you or whoever else might be around me. So these gifts are given, uh, the, the first Corinthians gifts are given for all of us to use. Um, some uh, almost, if you like, at will, uh, on demand. So tongues and prophecy would certainly be like that. Others kind of a little more situational that, you know, um, if, if I come across somebody with a broken leg, I, I don't need a word of knowledge. What I need is a gift of healing. And so the Holy Spirit will give me what I need in that time and place to help in that situation. I always need tongues. I always need prophecy. But the other gifts are, are, are kind of a little more situational. And so the Holy Spirit will give what is the appropriate gift at the appropriate time in order that you can see the purposes of God achieved in that situation. And um, it really is uh, our toolbox. It really is. These are the things that God gives us in order that we can do the things that he's called us to do. So Listen, if you want to experience the gifts of the Spirit at work in your life, you're not going to experience them sitting at home in your armchair watching the TV. You're only going to experience them if you step out in faith to do something, because that's when the Holy Spirit swoops in and gives you what you need to see mission accomplished. So, um, you know, we need to be engaging in the purposes of God and leaning on the Holy Spirit. And as we do that, he comes and he gives us whatever we need to see the job done. Then, um, you know, what is the job for us? First Corinthians chapter four, verse one. So then men ought to regard us as servants of Christ and as those entrusted with the secret things of God. Now it is required that those who have been given a trust must prove faithful. So uh, these are my words. Now God sends the Holy Spirit in his gifts to help us engage with God's mission. The spirit, the gifts and the mission are entrusted to us. We are required to prove faithful. So we are called to continue the mission of Jesus. Uh, if you're not sure what that means, well, read the Gospels, because whatever it is Jesus did, that's the mission we are continuing. Now, we, we of course, can't give our lives in, in payment of sin uh, like Jesus did at the cross, uh, because we are sinful people. And that job has already been completed. You know, uh, at the cross, Jesus uh, shouts out doesn't he it is finished or it is completed uh, so that job is already done the the con the ongoing mission of shining light in the darkness of bringing good news to the poor of seeing the sick healed uh, you know that whole uh, that uh, the whole um, vision that, that comes out of that uh, prophecy from Isaiah that Jesus quotes about himself and talks about his mission that now becomes our mission and these gifts from the Holy Spirit are given to us to help us fulfill that mission and we are required to prove faithful in other words there is a big challenge here on you and me that this now has been made our responsibility and we must fulfill that responsibility first uh, Corinthians 14 <coughs> excuse me uh, at verse 1 1 Corinthians 14 at verse 1 follow the way of love and eagerly desire spiritual gifts so here straight out Paul is telling us that these gifts from God to help us we should be eagerly desiring them we shouldn't be passive about it we shouldn't be considering the considering them as added extras here and there but we should actually be really calling on the Holy Spirit to help us and guide us and give us the things that we need Especially, Paul says, the gift of prophecy. For anyone who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. Indeed, no one understands him. He utters mysteries with his spirit. But everyone who prophesies speaks to men for their strengthening, encouragement and comfort. He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. And I would like every one of you to speak in tongues, but I would rather have you prophesy. 
He who prophesies is greater than the one who speaks in tongues unless he interprets so that the church may be edified. So first of all, it's as I said a few moments ago, there are gifts here that are about strengthening ourselves and strengthening the church. And Paul is intent that we get hold of these things straight away and start moving in these things in order that that work can be done. Um, and he continues uh, in chapter 14 at verse 20, brothers, stop thinking like children in regard to evil be infants, but in your thinking be adults. And uh, uh, Peter says in 1 Peter chapter 4, each one should use whatever gift he has received to serve others faithfully, administering God's grace in its various forms. These gifts are not given so that we can be rock stars. OK, these, not, these gifts are not given so that we can get a platform and look good. And, you know, these gifts are given to all of us so that we can all engage with this and in engaging with it, see the purposes of God achieved day by day in everyday life amongst the people that we live our lives with. So we need to understand this, you know, take our egos out of the equation here, understand that these are tools that God gives us to do the job that he's called us to do and the glory all goes to Jesus because that's where it belongs and we should each be working with these things we should each be uh, engaging with this as much as we can so that we become master craftsmen so that we get good at this um, so good at it that that actually we probably don't even notice when it's happening that if we come to pray for somebody we might exercise two or three of these gifts and not even realize that we've done it because we've just been in the flow with the holy spirit because we've practiced because we've gained a bit of experience because we're relaxed with it and all of this wonderful stuff is happening and we don't even realize half the time what's going on but we just want to make sure that jesus gets the glory so the gifts of the Holy Spirit are sent to glorify Jesus. How do they do that? They do that by us exercising them in the power of the Holy Spirit as he enables us so that people benefit from them. And as they benefit from them, their lives are made better. And we can then, we're then in a much better place to lead them to Jesus so their lives can be, can be made even more better. Is that proper English? Even more better? Even betterer? Um, uh, made better because they now have a relationship with him. It all leads to that ultimate aim of people knowing Jesus and having their lives changed forever. And these gifts are designed to help us, help us get on that journey and help us get other people on that journey. So um, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of questions about this. Feel free to ask questions in, in the comments and um, I will be with you for the next session so god bless you for now and let me just encourage you to engage as much as you can with the holy spirit and and be ready and open for these gifts to start manifesting in your life to the glory of jesus amen see you soon Great job, Dave. Yeah, it's, it's not bad, is it? It's not. It's not yeah. bad. No. Yep, send your questions in now. It was just... It's uh, more better than you. It's betterer. Betterer. Yes. Proper English, please. <laughs> it's more betterer. More betterer. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, no, so as, he, as, as Dave was talking, I was just thinking, you know, we, and I'm sure we'll have questions and ask them, but um, quite often will be what gift is that what gift is that what gift is that what gift is that and people yeah. are wanting to kind of put gifts into boxes into so we box. know yes. which gift it is yes and i mean i was just thinking can you imagine if we treated the rest of our lives like that you know <laughs> as, as we served a meal and we're going yeah. okay so what food group is that what yeah. food group is that what you know and you have the gift of washing up and the gift of <laughs> frying and the gift of baking and uh, but is it a, is it a gift of baking or frying or are they the same thing i don't know and, yeah so no but it's just interesting yeah. that um you know we can be quite obsessed with which gift it is i mean paul just says eagerly desire the gifts yeah. and i think the other thing to remember is that the, the list of gifts that we see is not an exhaustive gift uh, list yes. no no um, that actually paul's making a point and to make that point he's He's naming some of the prevalent gifts, but there, there are others, you know. So, I mean, 
one of the, one of the gifts um, is a serving or administration, yes. <laughs> and, and you know, giving, yeah. encouraging, <laughs> yeah, leadership, and and we tend to yeah. in a modern we 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 want the 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 platform gifts, the gifts that kind of yeah. elevate us. Yeah. Whereas that's not yeah. what the gifts are for. They're, they're to, it's to edify the church, edify yeah. ourselves. The only gift really to help elevate us is, is the gift of tongues because that yeah. builds us up and edifies us. And yeah. So, so yeah. So, um, mm. it's interesting. It uh, is. We're looking forward to your questions. I know, <laughs> I know we've already had at least one question so there. We're looking forward to your questions. So, um, let's, let's open let's fire. Go. Do you think, thanks, Karen. Do you think we should be using the gifts a lot more in everyday life, mm. looking for opportunities constantly, like in the supermarket? Go on then. Well, I would... Yes. Yes. Okay. Next question. <laughs> yes. um, I think I think though you've got to um, you've got to have some caution though because I've had um, people come up to me. I once had somebody come up to me. I was in. Um, a Christian bookshop in Long Eaton. There used to be a Christian bookshop there. And I had and this man, it was when I was single, and this man started following me around. And I was like, okay, why is he following me? And he followed me outside across the road, and he just kept following me for a bit, which I thought was quite strange. But then he, he caught up with me, and he said, um, I'm going to give you a word, and just told me this, I mean, he didn't know me, obviously, and it was just, it was, I felt quite, um, I don't know what the word is, threatened by, it. you know what I mean? I felt quite, oh, he's, he's just come up, I don't know him, and he didn't even introduce himself, and it was just, so you just, I think we, sometimes we have to be careful that the way we <laughs> say things and you know the the circumstances and the context, and just make sure that we don't just go up to people and lay hands on them and and just yeah. But yes, yeah. But it's just being careful. That's my opinion. Yeah, just I being think careful um, that we don't that end up putting people off. Um, yeah, but in the supermarket, yeah. yeah, why not? I think it's remembering that um, we are spiritual beings. Yeah. That actually, you know, as the Holy Spirit um, works through us and we receive the gifts from the Holy Spirit, we were created to be spiritual beings. Yeah. And why would you not be a spiritual being in yeah. your everyday life? I mean, I think, I think we've got to remember that the church is in place. So we have our, our public meetings and we have small group meetings because they are the places where you can practice yeah. and exercise and train. And, you know, so going to the the five point ministry gifts, you know, it says after that, doesn't it? You know, if we have these things in place, then it will stop us being childish yeah. and we'll grow into maturity. And, and that is, you know, church is a safe place to do that. Um, and, you know, I think the Pentecostal movement has become a lot less Pentecostal over the last couple of decades. You know, we, um, we, we saw a real move of the spirit. We saw um, real, Miracles and God moving in powerful ways, and it's almost as if, um, yeah. I mean, I think we're more reserved in using it on a Sunday, which makes us. If you if you're not going to use it in church, it's using your spiritual muscles, really, yeah. isn't it? Getting them trained up, and yeah, and and on a Sunday or when you're amongst other Christians. Getting them, getting yeah. yourself trained up, like you said, in a but life group. Or, yeah. If you're, if you're not going, if where, you're not going to do it when you're yeah. at church, you ain't going to do it outside. No. You, you, you know. Um, and I think, like you said, a bit of sensitivity. Yes. You know, um, let's not start like laying hands on people and saying, "Thus says the Lord." Um, <laughs> but you know, if you if you have a word of of, of, of knowledge yeah. coming to you, and and God's very clear that this is for that person. You know, I don't think there's any any harm at all saying no. I'm a Christian. I really believe God wants you to know this. I was just I was just thinking, I God when wants to when heal I you. first became a Christian, and I think I've lost some of some of that as well um, now. That confidence in God as well, because I can remember when I first became a Christian. I've been a Christian probably about a year or so, and I can remember God had, as I was walking past somebody who was sitting on the steps of a church in Long Eaton. 
and I kept walking past him backwards and forwards because I knew that God had given me a word for him. And and then in the end, I thought, right, I'm going to do it. And I sat down and spoke to him. And um, I just said, I'm a Christian and I believe God's given, you know, said this to me about you. And it was a word of knowledge for him. And it was it was just amazing. And I came away from that as well, um, feeling really um uplifted that I'd, that I'd obeyed God. I think, like you say, sometimes we can we can sort of, well, I think sometimes we can sort of just not do it. So you miss your chance sometimes, mm. don't you? Um, so if, I'd, I, if I, I don't know why I had that courage, because I think now I probably wouldn't do that. And oh, that's a shame. Probably because you've not been yeah. exercising. Yeah, because I'm not. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh. Show. <laughs> Thanks, Pete. <laughs> if the gifts are given given to us, read out loud. Yeah, it's hard. If the gifts are given to us, do you think some people waste time chasing gifts they desire or want, or gifts that give them a place in the church leadership, etc.? In doing so, they miss the gifts that God has set aside for them. Um, yes, <laughs> I do. Um, I just, I just think there's there's times when. I mean, as a musician, I know that I've I've seen some people. I mean, God's been really good to me. He's given me a, a gift in in mm -hmm. playing and playing prophetically and stuff. But I have seen some people want to be in sort of a frontline ministry and and want to be on doing when when that's not their gift at all and, and sometimes i've seen that and yeah. and you know you and but they're so gifted in another way god's given them a completely different gift but they ch they are chasing something that god's not got for them and and it's 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 hard and i think the more we listening to other people as well and you know and and just being i think talking to you to your leaders as well of of and exercising those gifts and not being afraid, yeah. but it's it's hard sometimes because you, I think some people do want to, uh, it because quite often you see those gifts in the public yeah. sort of things, and so you can get that right. I'm gonna I'm going to I need to have a, a I need to prophesy every week or what? Or I need to interpret tongues or whatever, and it may not you know it may that you you just at that point got a, a gift for going up to say to say somebody you're you know a private gift yeah, yeah something encouraging and just between you it doesn't always have to be yeah, up at the absolutely. front um but sometimes it is but you know it doesn't it's not all about being up at the front and and being in leadership you know as a, as a leader or whatever or as a musician or whatever it's about it's, being the church yeah it's about yeah exactly yeah, yeah. I was got, I just I know um, Dally's not saying this, but um, just point out you know the scriptures tell us to eagerly desire yeah. the gift. Um, what Pete's talking there is when we eagerly desire a certain gift and ignore the gifts that God's given yeah. us, which is what you were saying, isn't yeah. it? You know, so you know it's not wrong to to chase after gifts and say God give me more, give me more gifts. Yeah. But um, you know. I, I, I've got to say, I do think, you know, if God's giving you gifts and you don't use them, why on earth would he give you another gift? No. No. I mean, why? But, why would he? You know, if you can't, if you can't, you know, you're going back to the gift of the talent, they're the, the parable of the talents, yeah. aren't you? That if you don't use what God's given you, yeah, it's not, he's not going to give you any more. And also, I was just thinking as well, you know, about the prophets, um, the the pastors, prophets, teachers, and everything else. Uh, there's a difference between that gift and just prophesying yes. there's yeah. a, you know i should hope we're all pastoral you know i would hope that as christians that we're all care for one another but there's there's a difference in that and then um the gift of, of a pastor or the gift of teaching or the you know, the gift of prophecy evangelism yeah. and apostle and all that yeah. so th there's a clear difference yeah. in that yeah the scripture says. <laughs> well, we ought to read it out loud, didn't we? Yeah. What scripture says? <laughs> I can't read that, it. 
all should speak in tongues and have prophecy. Doesn't Paul say he'd like us to, but goes on to say he would rather yes. we have prophecy rather than tongues. Does this not suggest that not all will have tongues? Also, there, there are a number... Are we still waiting for the rest of that? Oh, okay, so it doesn't show. Um, we'll start with that first bit then, shall we? So that's in um, what scripture is... the? It's 1 Corinthians 14, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah, so it says, verse 1 Corinthians 14, verse... Um, for he who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, mm -hmm. but he who prophesies edifies the church. I would like each one of you to speak in tongues, but I'd rather have you prophesy. Yeah. And he who prophesies um, edifies. We're having the, the rest of the question come yeah. up to us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Oh, it's a long question, man. Go on, let me do it. Right. Out. Okay, bear with me. So it says this. What scripture says that all should speak in tongues and have prophecy? Doesn't Paul say he'd like us to, but goes on to say he would rather we have prophecy rather than tongues? Does this not suggest that all does this not suggest not all will have tongues? Also, there are a number of times the Bible says about being filled with spirit, where it says boldness is the first thing that occurs, not tongues. Don't ask off the top of my head. Um I think too much emphasis is given to tongues. I do speak in them. Do you think some are more important than others, aside from those two? So I, I think I understand what you're asking, Mim. Um, so, um, I think it's clear that um, through the scripture that there's always um, some kind of outworking of being baptized in the Spirit. Mm. Um, and it seems pretty common that that is the, the speaking of tongues because we, we see that throughout. I think with all these things, we've got to be very careful that we don't put God in a box and we don't say it has to look this way. Um, so, you know, quite often, so I'm, I'm thinking of the Old Testament, quite often it will say that the Spirit came upon them and they were filled with boldness and yeah. what have you. Uh, I think it says that with Gideon, it says it with... Um, um, of a, lots of other people. Lots of well. other people. Um, I can't name them off the top of my head either, Mim, and you've got Google. So, um, <laughs> But I think so. I think it's clear. I mean, Paul does talk, and I can't remember the exact wording, but Paul does talk about each one of you speaks in tongues. Yeah. So it, it's, it's quite easy to, to, to take the stance that that is one of the, the, the initial signs of being baptized in the holy spirit um but when he's talking about the gifts within a service he's he's saying you know actually when you we speak in tongues you're just building yourself up and i would prefer that you speak in tongues and uh, you speak you speak prophecy and you build the body up um i mean he also talks about how many times somebody should prophesy in the service and and, you know, we have to remember who he's writing to. So, you know, in Corinthians, he's writing to the church in Cor Corinth who were having these wild, outlandish kind of services where everyone was speaking in tongues and everyone was babbling away and and, and nothing's getting done. Yeah. There's no scripture being read. And, and so when Paul's writing to them, he's saying, you know, we need to bring some order here. We need to look at what we're doing. Um, it's kind of like... Um, when you have children, so there's there's me and I have a brother and two sisters, and we all behave differently. So for my parents to correct my other siblings for things that I did would not be relevant because some of the things that I did wrong, they would never have thought of doing wrong and vice yes. versa. So when my parents came to, to take, telling me what I should and shouldn't do, they would emphasize the things that I was doing yeah. not quite right and they would correct that whereas if they if they sat all four of us down and said well this is how you should behave and the other three are going well we already behave like that it just doesn't work so we have to remember the context of why paul's writing and he's writing to correct behavior in a in a community of believers and so i think it's just remembering that um yeah he, he does say as well i would I mean, he says, 
uh, Paul, I would like every one of you to speak in tongues. And no, then he says, um, but I would rather have you prophesy. Yeah. If, but, you know, that's... and and. I don't know if we're answering your question. No, I mean, it was I a long question. But speaking in tongues to me, it, it, there's been times, especially in the last couple of years, where I haven't got the words. I just haven't got the words to... to I'm crying out to God over things. Like with your accident, yeah. we have your accident and all sorts of things. I've just haven't got the words to to speak what what I want, and so I'm I'm speaking in tongues and I'm I'm. And we I we often do. What saying, but it's coming from. I here, mean, we often do it in church. You know, I mean, Paul says not to speak tongues um, unless you're bringing an interpretation yeah. in a corporate. Yeah. But um, in in our society, in the Western yeah. society, we'll quite often if we're having a time of worship. We'll encourage people yeah. to to start to speak out in yeah. tongues because what we're tongues, because yeah. I think because we're it's like you said we don't exercise enough yeah. but we we to actually start to move into the spiritual gifts we have to do something to build the spiritual yeah. person inside yeah. and so in a service we'll quite often we'll be starting to speak in tongues and we will start to raise our voices yeah. in the tongues and and then we start to see the prophetic flow and you know. Um, but you don't tend to. We don't tend to have the problem of churches spending an hour just speaking in tongues, no. which is kind of what Paul was yeah. trying to yeah. correct. Hope that helps a little bit. Sometimes gifts may be obvious to others, ourselves or others. Do you have any tips for someone who knows they have been called for something, but feels scared or out of their comfort zone? <laughs> well, Kat. Just join the worship team and start singing. Um, <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> so I think it's exercising it. So you mm. need to find, if God's called you into something, you've got to start doing it. And I know, I mean, there's a psychology book called Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. Yeah, anyway yeah. Um, and, you know, in God, I think, you know, we have to not allow ourselves to make excuses. So, you know, if you feel God's giving you a word to say and you're not the kind of person that's going to stand on the platform with a microphone and speak it out, then maybe the first step is to tell somebody else somebody about else, the word yeah. that God's given yeah. you. Now, ideally, one of the people that are leading the service. But again, if you don't have the courage to do that or you, you don't have the conviction, yeah. then speak to the person next to you or speak to somebody nearby that you know and, and say, you know, I really feel God saying this. Um, or write it down. Or write it down and, and pass it on. Yeah. Um, I mean, as a church, we're, if, if we feel that what you've got is of God, um, we'll happily read it off a piece of paper. I I did it once. Um, I remember in the service that we were guests then, and I didn't feel that the church knew us well enough, yeah. that um, I typed it onto my phone. And, and and then I went to the, the person who was leading the service and just handed them my phone and... Although we're not allowed to hand things at the moment, are we? No, but, no. <laughs> but you know, um, I think I think it's just find a way to start making a yeah. breakthrough. It's like you said right at the beginning, of the show exercising. Yeah. I mean, I know that for for myself that even now that there's times when I've I know that I've got a word for someone, and and I know, and and I can see it, and I know what I'm. You're supposed to be saying, and God's given me this word, and I still don't do it, and I don't, and and God will find somebody else as well if it, if it's something you know that that he he's going to say in whatever con, you know what the meeting or something, and he'll be giving it to me, and I'll be like, oh no, I can't do it, I can't do, it. no, I can't do it, and then somebody <laughs> else, all that. It's, yeah, it's and like somebody Daddy. else will do it. So Daddy was talking about uh, when they got the skipping rope, you're trying to jump in. And yeah. it, sometimes it feels like that, yeah. doesn't it? It's like, oh, I really there's, should there's go. Natural, but... There's a natural lull and you think, and you, okay. You're, you're, you're just hoping somebody else I'm speaks out before you. Just, yeah, and but then <laughs> I've had times when somebody else has done the exact same word because God's using somebody else. And, and I'll go, oh, I had that. I should have spoken. But the more you do, and again, like in small groups, I know we're not in small groups at the moment, you know, as a church, but yeah. in those sort of times as well are the times, or just with a few friends when you pray, those are the times that you can start to exercise. Uh, and it, and it's for other people, you know, if it's a word of prophecy, the other person's got to weigh it up anyway. Yeah. You know, as long as you don't put, for the Lord our God would have you know, or anything like that before it. No. I mean, I always find, I always find language for prophecy and stuff like that. 
I believe that yeah. the Lord said yeah. this. I, I feel like God wants me yeah. to say this to you. I, and you're giving the person a chance to weigh it up without yeah. saying, if you don't accept this, you 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 know you're going to be swallowed by a whale, um, <laughs> but I, I would also say, Kat, I think um, as a as a church, as in the world church, as in people of God, um, we've got to get better at encouraging people in their gifts. When we Definitely. see a gift in somebody, we we've got yeah. to get better at saying, "You've got a real gift in that." Um, yeah, yeah. To what extent? Ah. Uh-huh. To what extent do you think <laughs> unity or dissonancy in the church affects spiritual gifts and their use? I think, um, I think massively, Karen. Um, I think, you know, so the, word, the the Bible tells us that, you know, where, where there is unity, God commands it's a blessing. blessing. Yeah. Um, and we have got to take it that the, it, that, that the other way is, is, is true as well. Where there's yeah. disunity, there's, there's an absence. Mm. Of blessing, it doesn't mean we're not blessed at all, but it means that there's there's an obstacle. There's a, I kind of think, think of it as like a river with lots of rubbish junk. You know, the yeah. water might start going through, but there's there's stuff slowing it down. And um, so I think unity is a massive thing, and I think that's why, as we go through the epistles, especially, there's such a big thing about how you. Yeah how you put things right and you know when we come to communion table we make sure we've put things right and when we're together you know it the emphasis is if there's disunity the emphasis is on us to make things right yeah, to sort it out, yeah. because quite often i mean the world would say well it's they've caused the problem they should come they should yeah but actually the bible doesn't give us that option it says we we should um yeah, we, should be, we yeah. should be the people that put it whether right. we feel that we're in the right or the wrong you know, whether we we think that because I know yeah. that again I'm speaking for myself, but sometimes I go, oh well, you know, I didn't cause this. I'm not going to, to. But then somebody's got to make the approach, haven't they? Somebody's yeah. got to 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 make that first step towards the other person or or whatever. And it's we're a body, and if some you know, part of it's <laughs> my my mum's foot being cut yeah. off, you know. I, it's we it's that sort like you said about the river as well you know if it's blocked up yeah with disunity then it's not going to flow properly i mean the reality is so god you're accountable to god for your actions yeah. Yeah. aren't you and you know and i think um what you need to worry so our our, our mindset my mindset that i have to fight against is that i expect somebody else to behave in the way God wants them to yeah. behave. And actually, how they behave doesn't affect my relationship with God. And what I need to do is make sure that I am behaving correctly, that I yeah. am doing what, you know, so my question should always be, what does God want me to do in this situation? And if somebody's not behaving quite like they should, then God wants me to treat them well and treat them fairly and with grace and, and, with grace and you know, and mercy and, you know, and sometimes we just have to give people more than we think they deserve. Yeah. Because, I mean, we started this video, Dave started the video saying that the spiritual gifts are a gift. We can't earn them. We don't deserve them. You know, God's salvation is a gift. We don't, we can't earn it. Um, but we still expect people to earn our grace and our, and, and actually, you know, I think if, um, <laughs> yeah, the gift of reconciliation. Yeah. I think... I think in a marriage, um, somebody said it's give and take. Actually, I would suggest that a, that, that a healthy marriage is more a case of giving. That as, mm-hmm. as Michelle's husband, I'm not saying that I get this right, but as Michelle's husband, I should put Michelle absolutely first yeah. in every decision I make as a married couple. Mm-hmm. I should think about her before myself. I should put you higher than... And then if you do that for me... It's not about comfort. It's, it's actually about actually caring for that person more. And yeah. if we if we approached, and it can be very easy know, I, not to do that, yeah. can't it? It can be a bit well. And we know we know it's not it's that hard. easy. You know, we look at the disciples, and even the disciples <laughs> who were sat around yeah. Jesus couldn't quite get that right. No. Um, and was there was disunity, and there was you know, and we look at the New Testament, and we see, you know, I'm not going with that man, and and we we'll split off, and we'll go. I'll go with Apollos, and 
you know, so we, we know that it's not that easy, but I think, um, I think if we can try to build an atmosphere of unity, if we can try to agree that we're not going to agree on everything, but we're all pushing for the same thing. Then, yeah, and then, again, try, yeah, building each other up rather than trying to tear them down. Yeah. You know? And sometimes I, d I do want to do that. Not, I don't think I want to tear somebody down. But you know what I mean? I want sometimes I can be, I can be thinking, well, you know, they, they did something. Obviously, that we were watching them. a while back. That'll show them. That'll show them. What was that on? <laughs> it was on um, Big Bang Theory. Big Bang Theory. Theory. Yeah. So Penny, I think, was asking, uh, <laughs> am I behaving well? And then one of the other characters says, well, if when you're going through your thought process, you can say, that'll show them, then you're not thinking well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I'll give them a bag of sweets, that'll show that'll them. That'll show them. Then, yeah. um, actually, that's not coming from a place yeah, of grace. That's not grace, is it? <laughs> anyway, there you go. Big Bang Theory. If the Bible says we should eagerly desire spiritual gifts, do you think God wants us likewise to eagerly desire to look for every opportunity to exercise those gifts too? I, I absolutely think that's true, Paul. I think, um, as we said earlier on in the session, I think the, the gifts that we use on a Sunday at church which we don't use enough, no, um, are only supposed to be a place to practice yeah. so that when we go onto the mission field, so the mission field is anywhere outside of the doors of this place. Um, yeah. And we should be looking. And, you know, do we pray each morning, God, give me give me a chance to to, to, to use to your use gifts? the gifts. Do we? Yeah. Um, not always. Not always. Yeah. So, yeah, I think we should look for every opportunity to exercise those gifts. Um, There's people in the world that are crying out for, for something. Mm -hmm. you know? There's people who, who don't know God. And he's, uh, through his Holy Spirit, he's given us ways to, to reach people. And that's why we should be, should be asking for those gifts, eagerly design them. And and looking for opportunities because it could be that that that's the time that somebody comes to God through something that yeah that God's given us. And I I just want to point out, you know, so I mean, we all kind of default on prophecy. Um, yeah. He then maybe maybe we, we 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 kind of think miracles would be nice, but that's not for <laughs> me. I'm just talking for you know because mm. um, yeah. that's that's a big gift, isn't it? The gift of miracles. That's the gift biggie. of faith, it's yeah, a biggie. A biggie. Um, but, you know, just looking around this building this week, and I've seen people come and work around the building because they want to serve God, yeah. and they've used their gifts for it. And they, yeah. um, and we can't, you know, some of the gifts that are worded in the Bible are very practical gifts, the gift of hospitality, the gift of giving, the gift of, serving. you know, serving, yeah. you know, and and we we have to... It's our duty to reflect the heart of God. And it's our duty to, as we're in the world, to our best ability, show how generous and how loving and how gracious and, you know, and great. If somebody needs a touch of healing, let's offer to pray for healing for them. Let's, yeah. you know, but, but let's just find opportunities to demonstrate God. And, you know, um, David Sherman talks about prophesying and says basically encourage people if you start to encourage people if you start to speak yes. words of encouragement yes. then that that can quite becomes, often become yeah prophetic um but the important thing is to start to encourage to to build people up to um so but but we we were talking about this on the way here weren't we mm. but you know quite often it's all about me it's yeah. what 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 i get out of it what blesses me how I feel about it and and we can quite easily become like selfish children yeah. can't we we feel entitled entitled yeah so yeah look for opportunities oh <laughs> I said for Charlotte well done uh, Pete at least Pete. somebody listens to me Pete, how do we recognize the gifts destined for us and not waste time chasing them um when he says rainbows, what? does he mean God's promises? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Over the rainbow. Yeah. 
Okay. I don't know. How do we recognise the gifts destined for us and not waste time? So I'm not quite sure what you mean. Uh, do you mean spiritual gifts? Yeah, I think he's talking about going on wild goose chases and chasing right. things so that's that sim aren't... similar then to what we were talking about with, yeah. with um, whoever's question it was. I'm getting very confused at the moment. Age. My age, it really is. Um, I think... <sighs> Is is the biggie? Have we frozen? Or we just... Let's just keep going. It's our screen. Okay. So, um, yeah. We're on. Oh, are we on? Okay. Yeah. That was strange then. We're back. So we are back. And, <laughs> and we're, we're back. back. <laughs> so yeah, to, I mean, talking to God first of all, asking asking the Holy Spirit to give you, you know, to to guide you, talking to other people as well. You know, other people will see a gift in us. I I know that um, pastors, um, leaders that I've served under will have re recognised certain things yeah. in me, in Russ, you know, together as we've served together, pastors, uh, leaders above us, um, like Dave, for instance, has recognised things in us and in me before I knew about it, really, because yeah. I'm just like, oh, it can't be. And... So they so talking to our our leaders, other people, not only our leaders, but people who are mature in the faith, you know, that we trust, that will give us an honest opinion as well, and not just you know just saying yeah whatever. So so yeah, God, talking to God, talking I think... to you know, and and talking to each other, and ex again exercising yeah. them. And if it if you if it's not working. Then it's obviously not a, yeah. necessarily a gift. I think um, as well, if your leaders are doing their jobs right, yeah, um, they should be giving you opportunities mm. to be in the place where they see your gift yeah. in. Yeah. So you know, if you if you're asked, would you consider doing? It's not because they're just trying to make up the numbers. Quite Definitely often, not. it'll be because they see, they something, see something in, in you, you yeah. that they're trying to draw out. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> and it may be that you don't like I've said like with me, you don't see it yourself, but Dave has seen things in, in me, yeah, I, you I, have as yeah. well. In, in me that I, I didn't know, I mean, it's good to recognize the gifts in us, yeah. Um, but I still, rightly or wrongly, I don't think that's the important thing. I think the important part of this question is to not, not ignore what God's given you. So not be chasing rainbows, as yes. Pete put it, um, so as we eagerly desire the gifts. Because I remember when I first became a Christian and a friend of ours, and you, you'll probably know who I'm talking about, had a list of the gifts that he wanted. Yes. I'm and I, and, and I want this gift and I want this gift, but I'm not bothered about those gifts. That's not what Paul's saying here. Paul's saying, yeah, ones, Paul's yeah. saying, eagerly desire yeah. the gifts. Just, just desire what God's got for you. Yeah. Just you know, and he, he says later on, doesn't he? You know that that at the right time, the gift will be given to you. So you know, there's a there's a, a quote, or oh, oh, it's a Corrie Ten Boom. I keep talking about you Corrie like Corrie Ten, Ten Boom, don't but you? But she um she wrote in one of her books that she was going to the trains. She was asking her her dad why why something wasn't happening or, or whatever, and he said to her, he said, when we go to the train station and we get a ticket, he said, do I give it to you straight away? Because I think she was asking him, how will I, you know, could I, this this gift of whatever, I, it's not here with me yet. And he said, he said, I carry the tickets until it's time for us to board the train. And when we're on the journey at the right time, I give you the ticket. To the, and, and at the right time, God will give you what you need. And so we don't have to be in, in some ways chasing rainbows because no. God God knows what we need, God knows what we want, and he will give us the right things at the right time. That's a good answer. Thank you. You don't yeah. know, sound so surprised, you know. Mike Brown. <laughs> Ooh. No. no. Mike says, do you need to be materi materially 
poor to be spiritually no. rich. No. Um, I think, because um, obviously the Bible has a lot to say about wealth, and but I think it's about our attitude to, to, to wealth. Um, so, you know, we can, I think, <laughs> I mean, Jesus says it's easier for a, uh, a rich a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than it is a for a rich man. man. Yeah. I think it's. I think when you're materi materially poor, it's easier to rely on God because you have no other option. Um, and I think that is why we see in the Western world a lot less faith and a lot less because we have we have a social service system. We have um, social um, payments. And a safety net there. We have the NHS. We have so a lot of our needs. Yeah, so people who have got nothing still can still can rely yeah. on on the services and um, and so so we don't need that faith because you know if if I need food, somebody will help supply it. Um, I think if you so if you're rich, it's even harder. But I think. You know, I think it's about an attitude. It's about yeah. an attitude of what you do with what you've got. And, yeah, because you know, yeah. Mike, I know you and Louisa are, are generous with all that you have. Yeah. Um, and so, but I think I think that's the important thing is whether yeah. it, whether whether your material stuff is for you or whether it's for God's kingdom. Yeah. If you're if you're um, if you're rich materially, you're rich. You've got a chance to 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 give more to to be able to bless other people more yeah. you know it's like you say what what you actually do with it it and it's not it's i mean you don't want to be chasing the thing of um sort of people are they some of the american churches <laughs> have this big thing of i don't know what it's called but prosperity prosperity that's it um but it's not about that it's you know, if you're blessed to be to be rich then it it doesn't mean that you're not spiritually rich because you have you have a chance to, to have you know have those gifts of giving and the gifts of of serving in in that way as well. What what, what I find incredible um, in my time is that you can find people um, with a po poverty mentality across the board. Yes. Um, so yeah. you you meet people who you know. Are, are very wealthy and doing very well, and they'll still have a poverty mentality. Mm. And I think that's 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 where the issue is. You know, you can you can have poor people that are in a poverty mentality, mm. yeah. and all the way up in a pot. And actually, you know, well, oh, I can't afford to do that yeah. because um, where's where's actually whatever God's given you, if you give it away. Yeah you'll get it back. And that, that doesn't mean I'm telling everyone to sell the houses. And But what I'm saying, you know, if you're generous, you know, um, so Paul says, you know, if, if God's given you a gift of generosity, be generous, give it away, help people. And, and so anyway, yeah. So we've had to that. Yeah. We're, we're getting close yeah. to the end. Have we got any oh. other goodies or brilliant? I hope we've answered your questions. It's been great to, uh, we've just been really encouraged with how many of you have got involved tonight. Yeah. And so it's absolutely brilliant. And, uh, Thank you so yeah. much. And Russ was really surprised that I answered a question. That, that, that encourages us though, doesn't it? You know, yeah, to see does. so many questions. I mean, uh, Karen's not had to ask a lot because, no. because everyone else has about? jumped in. Because I think Karen sometimes just gives us a poke because. Karen's brilliant. Karen's brilliant. Because, um, yeah. So, yeah, so thank you. Um, Shell's going to pray for us in a minute, which we did discuss beforehand, so I'm just reminding her. Um, so um, I'm just going to remind you to join us on Sunday. We're, we've not done booking, so if you if you want to come to church, come to church. The doors are open. We're, 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 we're staying safe. We're keeping um, to the rules, um, but there's plenty of space here. So please, if you want to be at church, come to church. If you geographically can't make it, <laughs> join us online but yeah. um if listen if you live within a short drive from us you should be here yeah. um yeah. you know we've just been talking about spiritual gifts and we can't we can't properly exercise using our spiritual gifts if we're sat at home on our city that doesn't mean that doesn't mean god can't use you but what i mean is 
we can't bless the body, we can't build up the body, we can't edify each other, we can't encourage each other the same when we're detached and in different places than we can. And it's been great. Teas and coffees last week. In there. Oh, oh, it was lovely, wonderful. Lovely. Um, it was really nice. Um, so, you know, we've got refreshments this week and we're looking forward to having drinks with you. There's no cakes, though, Shell. Good, good. Oh. So, yeah, that's um, good. That's good to know. Ali, good night all. Is that, is that the first time Alison's turned up? <laughs> well done. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Sandra. Thank uh, hoping to see you soon. Yeah. 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 So just to remind you, um, we've got a couple of things in the di diary. So there's um, Saturday the 3rd, which is um, the, the transition evening. Um, oh, yeah. And then I had a conversation this week with Mark Ritchie about um, Ooh, vision our Vision Weekend. weekend. So yes. that's going to be really good. We've got Mark Ritchie and John Andrews for our Vision Weekend. I mean, First, worth second, for third of, those, of October. Yeah, so Mark's going to be brilliant. Wow. Yeah. No, he makes really me good. laugh. Really? Mark does, yeah. Not as his jokes. I think oh, his right. jokes yeah, are terrible. Yeah. His jokes are awful, <laughs> but he makes me laugh. <laughs> but there you he's go. Good as Mark. Um, Right, Shell, you're going to pray for us, and Thank then we're you. going to remind everyone, you know, stay safe, stay, stay connected, connected, be at, be at peace. peace. Well Come on. <laughs> you can have it painted on that back wall. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Father, we want to thank you that, Lord, that you are the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and we thank you that you, you left your throne in heaven and you came to earth for each one of us so that we don't have to be separated from you anymore. And we want to praise you and thank you for the yeah. gifts that you have given to each one of us, the gift of salvation, first of all, the gift of our eternal life, Lord, and the gifts that the Holy Spirit gives us to encourage us, to, to bless others and to communicate, Lord, with you in a, in a deeper way and in a new way, Lord. And we just ask that you will help us, each one of us, tonight to step out in faith in a, in a greater way and to use um, our gifts for your glory, Lord, yeah. to eagerly d desire those gifts, Lord, to spend more time with you and, and just asking, asking you for, for more of you and just, and just wanting more and more of you and, yeah. and help us, Lord, to have the confidence in you, Lord, um, confidence that, um, that you will give us the right things at the right time. That was just talking about that ticket, that you'll give us the, the correct gifts, the things to say at the right time or do at the yeah. right time. I'm just asking you to bless Dave and Sue, Lord, as they, they go into their second week on holiday, Lord. I just I just pray that you will um, give them rest. Yeah. Um, restore them, Lord. It's it's been a long year, Lord, and I, I just I just ask that you will just continue to bless David and Sue, yeah. that you'll pour out your, your rest and your restoration on them, Lord, and, and return to us um, refreshed, cool. Lord, and ready for this next season, Lord. Yeah. And Lord, I just also ask that you'll just bless us all um, and that you will use us, continue to use us to tell others about you. Yeah. Lord, and Lord, I just ask that you just continue to bless us until we meet again. Amen. So I'm going to just try this. I don't know if we didn't rehearse this, but I'm going to see if Michelle's old enough to remember. So it's time mm -hmm. for me to say it's good night from me. Good night from him. <laughs> good night. Good night. <laughs>